Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And we welcome you to worship this day. It is Palm Sunday, and uh, we have several worship services and events to look forward to. We have a Monday, Thursday service on Thursday evening, a Good Friday service on Friday. Both of those services are at 7 o'clock. Uh, then we will have our Walk for Water on Saturday, uh, and we're going to be doing some things differently uh, for this year's annual Walk for Water. We're actually going to have four prayer stations as we walk. Uh, Allison Snyder, one of our church members, is going to go live on Facebook, and we'll do that through the church Facebook page. Uh, we'll also have rides available if you want to do just a portion of the walk and not the full uh, two-mile walk that is the complete track that we'll be doing. There'll also be a prayer sheet available if uh, you'd like to participate but would rather not walk. It'll include some information about our water partners in Peru and about that mission and ministry. So we hope you'll join us for that. Then, of course, Easter Sunday, we'll have our two worship services, one at 9 o'clock and another service at 11 o'clock. Um, let's see, there's also a men's fellowship this Thursday. We meet on the last Thursday of each month at Glory Days at 1130. Uh, that's open for all men of the church and their friends, so you're welcome to join us. Uh, that concludes the announcements, so let us now continue in worship. Join me now to the call of worship. Let all creation shout. Wave the high. Jesus is coming. Jesus Christ comes in humility. He comes in love. Help us to receive God's love and to love one another. Hosanna to Jesus, son of David.
please, you. please join me in the prayer of confession, following by your own silent prayers confession. Let us pray together. We love grace. We love excitement, the colors, the noise. Today we celebrate Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, and the scene is wonderful. But there's the reality here. The reality is that although we wave our branches and shout Hosanna, we have not always behaved as disciples. Too often we have wandered from the path of Christ. There have been times we have turned away who have helped help. Forgive us, Lord. Help us to turn our lives around and truly serve you. Help us to say with sincerity and faith, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We have opened our hearts to Jesus Christ and transfer our lives today. For we ask this holy name. Amen. Amen. Hear these words of God's assurance of forgiveness. Beloved in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Live as a forgiven people. May we come to realize the power of God's love through the gift of Jesus Christ. Make that love a transforming agent in your own life so that finally our celebration may truly reflect our faith and joy in Jesus Christ. And now, as you have been greeted with the peace of Christ, so now let us greet one another with the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. So as we've had a shift in our children's music program, uh, one thing we're doing is we're introducing today a family choir, which is a new choir. So if any of you parents or grandparents are interested in joining us, we're going to do this again, Diane. I'm talking to you. <laughs> and uh, you're welcome to come sing with us sometime. Just talk to me afterwards.
So this morning's scripture reading comes from the book of John, chapter 12, verses 12 to 16. Hear these words. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet them, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's couch. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Can I invite all of our young people to come forward? And I'm going to have them sit right here and not near the palms. I'm going to give you the palms as you exit so Miss Caroline can deal with them. <laughs> but not now. So, thank you for singing today with the family choir. That was wonderful. So, today is a special day. What day is today? Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Can you guys move up here so that our congregation can see you guys? Because it's hard to see you. See so that you can, they can see you. I want them to see. So today is Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday, what do we say on Palm Sunday? Hosanna, Hosanna, or Hosanna, Hosanna, however way you want to say that. What do you think that means? Why do you say that? Why do we say that? Because it's something we say? Yeah. That's a good enough answer. On, on Palm Sunday, we always say Hosanna. That means like, hip hip hooray, God. We, it's a praise that we can say, say, you know, sometimes we say, hey, hallelujah, which means praise the Lord. That's Hosanna is similar to that as a praise. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hip hip hooray, God, you are the best. That's what we're saying. But there is another meaning for Hosanna. It means save us. So can you say save us? Save us. So as you wave, you could say save us. So Jesus is coming. And they thought Jesus had all this power. He, they thought that Jesus had the power of what? Who is the most powerful person that, we, that you might know? Zeus. Who? Zeus. Zeus? <laughs> that was not what I was ex- <laughs> I was thinking king. <laughs> okay, so this was a king, right? So I was thinking, in that time, the most powerful person was the king. And the king would wear a crown like this, right? So the king had all this power. What kind of power did the king have? To rule the land. So if I was the king and I said, bow down, what do you have to do? Everybody had to bow down. If I say, eat the dirt, what do you have to do? You have to eat the dirt. You do. Why? Because the kings have all the power. And they thought that Jesus had that kind of power, that he was a king just like this. But actually, Jesus had a lot of power. He did. He had power to walk on water. He had power to do miracles. He had powers to heal. But Jesus did not use that power like the kings to make people do things that way. The kind of power that he had was power to save. That's why I'm going to today give you these crowns. You see these crowns are made with what? Can you see? Is it made with gold? They say Hosanna. It says Hosanna. Don't I look cute? Don't I look cute? Today, I want you to look all cute. I'm going to give one of these to you, which you can color. Marsha has colored this one for me. Look how pretty that looks, right? It says, Hosanna. As a reminder that Jesus is our king, is our king, but Jesus does not, does, has the power to save us. 
to save us from sin, to save from ourselves, to be our savior. And that's what we are proclaiming today. So when we say Hosanna, Hosanna, we're saying, Jesus, you are our savior. We trust in you. You have the power. And we are going to put all of our trust in you, power to love us no matter what. That's the greatest power. It's the power to love. So may this crown, which I'm going to put on Carol right here. And I'm going to give each of you a crown for you to color, to put on. It's made of palm trees that remind you that you have the power that Jesus had. And that power is power to love, right? And you know what? That power to love is the greatest power of all. It really is. You will see that if you can love someone, then you can, how many people do? Okay, here we go. Oh, good thing I had enough for everyone today. All right. So, Ms. Carolyn, you can have them color and talk more about that in, your, in the Sunday school class. Let me, let me pray you out as you go. Loving God, we are so grateful that you are a God who saves us. And so help us to remember that the power that you give to us is the power to love. And so may we go out and to love one another and to love ourselves as you have loved us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, I'm going to even take, allow you to take a palm as you go out and sing, shout Hosanna as well. Go! <laughs> Miss Carolyn can do whatever she wants with that. <laughs> We're continuing to collect the one great hour of sharing special offering, which supports the Presbyterian Hunger Program, Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, and Self-Development of People. You can offer that. There's offering envelopes in your pews, and uh, we'll collect that through Easter Sunday. Jesus says, given it will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put in your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure that you get back. Let us offer to God our tithes, our offerings, and our very lives.
Let us pray together. Good and gracious God, we too cry out with the crowds. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, as we are truly grateful for your greatest gift to us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Just as you have given so much for us, we bring these gifts of our lives as a symbol of our faith, as an act of our discipleship. Use our gifts and us as a part of the inbreaking of your kingdom, which comes and is still coming into our world today. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and compassionate God, once again we have entered into your holy sanctuary and we ask now that you would enter into the sanctuary of our hearts. Help us to be still and to know that you are God. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Meet James Enzor, Belgium's favorite famous painter. He was born in Brussels to two refined and well-educated parents from England, and academia held little interest for Enzor. He left school at age of 15 to begin his artistic training, and he first exhibited his artwork when he was 21 years of age. For almost 40 years, he had his studio in the attic of his parents' home. In response to the French pointillist style, Enzor used palette knives, spatulas, and both sides of his brush to put down patches of color with expressive freedom. In this scene, James Ensor envisions Jesus entering contemporary Brussels in a Mardi Gras parade in this magnificent painting, which he calls Christ's Entry into Brussels in 1889. Uh, if you have not seen it in person, you can see this magnificent eight-foot-high, 14-foot-wide painting at the Getty Center Museum in Los Angeles. The parade of people floods 
toward the viewer. And there is a myriad of colors, people, clothing, signs, banners that clash. Many people are wearing masks competing for our attention. Public, historical, and allegorical figures, along with the artist's family and friends, make up the crowd. The haloed Christ is at the center of the turbulence, and this is a close-up of that part of the painting. As the haloed Christ is at the center, mostly ignored, a precarious, isolated visionary amidst the herd-like masses of modern society. Enzor's Christ is a humble leader, champion of the poor and oppressed, in opposition to the political leader of the time, Emile Littre, shown in Bishop's Guard holding a drum major's baton and leading on the eager, mindless crowd. Now, you want to hear something interesting, but not surprising. The exhibition society that Ensor helped to start refused to display this painting. In the family of artists, this painting would be excluded, and it was not exhibited publicly until 1927. I'm sorry, 1929, actually. Enzor displayed Christ's entry prominently in his home and studio throughout his life. His encounter with Christ at this intersection in Brussels was both public and also deeply personal. In his gospel, John is trying to locate Jesus Christ among the raucous crowd. Christ's procession into Jerusalem is in all four Gospels, but John's story is the shortest of all of the Gospels. He remembers the event of Christ's procession itself, not anything about the preparations or the procurement of the donkey. Jesus enters Jerusalem. The next day, proclaims John, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming into Jerusalem. Every hotel was booked. Every room occupied. Jesus would again have to find an alternative place that would welcome him. And Jesus keeps entering into the intersection of our lives. And as much as we hate to admit it, there are times when we only have a little room in our heart for Jesus. For James Ensor, he met Jesus at an intersection processing into 1889 Brussels. And we meet him at intersections today, Los Coyotes Diagonal and Studebaker Road, Pine Avenue and 4th Street, 6th Street and Long Beach Boulevard, Carson and Woodruff. And one of the hazards that we have to be mindful of, we have to be careful not to trade a relationship with Jesus Christ for a history with Jesus. What this means is sometimes we can focus too deeply on the past rather than Jesus Christ who is present among us today and who will lead us in the future ahead. Maybe we know Jesus. We have his resume. We can remember some of his stories and we may even have pictures from the past on our phones that remind us of our spiritual encounters with God. But it's different when you walk with Jesus every day and you have this vibrant, loving relationship and a dependency on him and a deep and abiding trust and faith in Christ. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, forever proclaims Hebrews. Not blessed is the one who came in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ was with us in the past. Jesus Christ is present among us today. Jesus Christ will lead us in the future ahead. Think about a time 
when you have had a, a life-changing experience that, that really touched your life. Think in particular about maybe a, a time that you went away from home, a, a retreat, a camp. Um, Gerald Abraham and one congregation that I served said, it's amazing what four different walls will bring in terms of awareness and learning. After this experience that you had, you saw the world differently. Uh, I can think of many of these places for me in my life. I know recently our youth just returned from Big Bear for a Presbytery retreat, and just hearing their stories sparked many memories that I had of going away to church camp, the, the quiet reflection times of prayer and meditation, having some individual quiet time alone with some focused prayers and questions for reflection, which was comforting for me as an extrovert to learn how to use some of this quiet time more faithfully, uh, to do challenging things like zip lines and a high ropes course. These weren't just fun, but they were challenging to see that this is something that I can do, even though I had a, a fear of heights. Uh, also, can remember uh, a dance, uh, a middle school dance, with the camp that we had with the Presbyterian Church and the Methodist Church. Uh, and I remember slow dancing and trying to, in the Midwest, wipe the mosquitoes off my legs every 30 seconds. But the teachings, I'll have to say, were not always my favorite, but I do give thanks that there were wonderful and powerful people of faith who proclaimed words over my life and even though the teachings were not my favorite in that time, I much preferred the zip lines and the, the things like that. But these powerful words that were spoken over my life have come back to bless me time and time again. We have powerful experiences and memories, but we have to be very careful not to trade a relationship with Jesus Christ for a history with Jesus Christ. To look back and to give thanks, but also to give thanks that God is present with our life now, that we know and trust that God will be present with us in the future days. When our mind begins to scroll these pictures and memories from our life, sometimes I think we're tempted to see it as just a good memory. Hear this good news. The living Christ, our resurrected Lord, calls us to live it. We can have inspiring experiences over and over again, but sometimes we trade a relationship with Jesus for a history with Jesus. When God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, God acted in the past and Jesus Christ is acting now and will act again in the future. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We're not just commemorating past events. The New Interpreter's Bible Commentary proclaims that Palm Sunday is the liturgical remembrance through which Jesus' entry becomes real for you and for our worshiping community today. This is extraordinary news for us. But sometimes God knows we can have short-term memories. Teflon brain, I've heard it called. You know, it's, it's good on a pan, but it's not good on your brain. Uh, things happen, we experience life, and for some reason, it's just not sticking. And this happens to people of every age. I've seen this happen to young people sometimes when they're distracted or are trying to multitask when maybe it's just best to pay attention to what's right in front of us. Because in life there can be so many distractions, and we know this, we can get lost in the crowd. It's like Enzor's memory of the crowd of people in Brussels at the Mardi Gras parade, and there are so many things in life that are competing for your attention, I know that. Sometimes we cannot even remember what we did yesterday. What day is it today? It's Palm Sunday. John's gospel sees the power and importance in this counting in our faith. 
The next day begins today's scripture passage. And it begins John's storytelling of Christ's procession into Jerusalem. Since the anointing took place on Saturday, the entry takes place on Sunday. Only John's gospel specifies the day of the week of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. And the church has followed this chronology. And this is one of the beauties of our liturgical calendar in the Christian faith, is that it helps us to know what day it is. And I'm not just talking about the day of the, day of the week. It is the year of our Lord, Palm Sunday, the Sunday before Easter, the Resurrection Day, which we celebrate every single Sabbath day. Every Sunday, we celebrate the resurrection. We remember God. We meet God in the present. And we give thanks for the new life that we have been given and will be given whenever we receive the gift of faith in Jesus Christ. Pictures and stories remind us of events and experiences that we have had in life. Jesus' procession into Jerusalem was an event. Many people were there. They could pull out their phones and they could show their friends and say, hey, I was there. I was there when Jesus processed into Jerusalem. And these pictures were all, the, the pictures were all there and they reminded them of all these great memories. In their pictures, you could see Jesus on the donkey riding into the city of Jerusalem with joy and with humility. In their selfies, you could see the parade that was behind them and all the colorful clothing. You could feel the energy of being there in that place. Sometimes we can experience something meaningful and even powerful, and then it's like we just go back to the same old thing. And the miraculous thing that God has done and how God revealed God's self to us, we may see it as just an event or a history. But the living God is in this book, the Bible. Jesus Christ is living. He is alive and is real. And he is continuing to walk alongside of you today. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, proclaims John. He is the first and the last. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is our future. People, especially biblical, literal, uh, bi biblical literalists, uh, criticized the artist James Ensor because they thought that his artwork was not really true to the biblical story. And yet I think Ensor can inspire us to remember and give thanks for how God has moved in our lives in the past, but also to help us envision how God is moving into the in intersections of our lives today, just as they moved in the life of James Ensor in 1889 Brussels. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Find a person in the crowd in this painting of James Ensor. Pick out a person in the crowd and imagine that you are that person in the parade. Find someone in this great crowd of people. Find yourself in the crowd. Are they lonely? Do you know someone who is lonely? Jesus Christ is about to get off the donkey and come close. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Find Jesus in the crowd. Focus on him. See and hear Jesus Christ in the crowd, filled with distraction and chaos, and look for him and meet him and continue to walk alongside of him, for he will give you more joy and peace than we can ever imagine. Blessed is Jesus who comes to us now and will come again. To God be the glory. Let us pray. Compassionate God, we pray.
pray that you become such a living God in our lives and that you are so real in our lives that we are dependent on you and nothing else. We don't forget what you've done, but you're also continuing to do something in our lives. We want to partner with you, Holy Spirit. Really reveal who Jesus is in our personal lives. We thank you and love you. I pray that as we, the children of God, walk out of this sanctuary, Jesus, let the resurrection life and resurrection power be real in our lives and in the world. That we may truly know who you are, knowing and then walking in faith. Lord God, send us out into the world to serve you with enthusiasm and with the abundant life and joy that you offer. Bless your people and let there be an increase of holy community in this place. And I don't know why, but I want, to rebu- I want to rebuke loneliness in Jesus' name. We thank you and bless you. Amen. of us so let us offer our prayers unto God oh good and gracious God on this Palm Sunday as we enter Holy Week we admit how easy it is to love a parade the floats the bands people waving at those passing by sometimes just being part of the crowd cheering and laughing is exciting and what can be better than balloons or ticker tape to celebrate a victory Oh, what joy. And yet, we know too well that parades can become mobs, that celebrations are interrupted by gunshots, that shouts of joy are replaced by screams of terror, that shouts of Hosanna can turn into shouts of crucified. Oh, Lord, we need you, so come and save us now. Hear our prayers for those who wait for the heroes and victors to arrive instead of joining the fight themselves. Hear our prayers for those who cannot lift their voice because life or health has worn them down. Hear our prayers for those who spoil the joy with their own agenda. Hear our prayers for those who feel a burden of expectations they cannot meet. Hear our prayers for those who just need a little peace and quiet. Hear our prayers for those who wonder why everyone else has not yet joined the March for Justice. Hear our prayers for those who have heard, not yet, wait a little longer. Hear our prayers for those who cannot face the cross. Hear our prayers for those who desperately need an empty tomb on Easter morning. Hear our prayers for us and the, all the things we carry. Give us strength and courage, faith and hope to follow Jesus this holy week. As we dine at tables, as we pray, as we walk, and even as we flee and deny, remind us that your love that never fails O oh Lord, we need you until that day when we might know the joy fully and see you face to face. As we wait with the confidence of the children of God, we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand and sing our closing hymn. Right on, right on in majesty, our God, the tribe, goes on a cry. Thy humble beast pursues its road with palms and scattered garments strode. Right on, right on. of the Lord. Blessed is the one who has come, who comes, and who will come again, because our past, present, and our future all are God's. So may you encounter Jesus in the faces of those God places before you this day and every day. And now may the love of God and the compassion of Christ and the creativity and communion of God's Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you now and always. Amen.